The cruiser Maxu was watching paused in the middle of the road once more, and the corner of his mouth curled upward. He scanned the dozen or so other cruisers, whose progress had stalled as their safety functions kicked into action and they waited for the erratic one to clear off the road. What they didn't know was the cruiser wouldn't be moving. He'd made sure that the transport would be harmless yet irritating for as long as it took authorities to show up, disarm it, and trace it back to him. It shouldn't take long, since half the guards in the city were on this very street today. They wouldn't be able to prove much. Maybe that he'd hacked into a control panel. He expected a few weeks in jail, a slap on the wrist. Then he'd be out and ineligible for marriage for another year. On second thought, the Queen might be exceptionally angry about him pulling this today. After all, this was the start of her much-lauded human tour. Honestly, if he'd remembered it was happening today, he'd probably have picked a different location, or done it another time. As it was, his little stunt was blocking the road so thoroughly that the waiting line of extra-large cruisers ready to transport humans across the world were all stuck in place, halted until his mess could be cleared. He couldn't bring himself to feel too bad, though. Parading the humans through secretly selected cities of Tremonta was offensive, like these aliens were walking pieces of art for Clacanians to take in. The crowd should have been annoyed the street was blocked in the direction the departing humans needed to go, but all he could see from his wall-leaning stance fifty yards away were smiles. Between a short break in the crowd, he spotted a tall female with dark curls and deep brown skin smiling and waving. A blonde followed behind, grinning just as broadly. Maxu found himself squinting through the Clacanian swarm for glimpses of the humans, despite his aversion to the parade. His Traxian half, a species far more tumultuous in their emotions and actions than his other half, Lignus, pushed him to feel reluctant curiosity about the humans. Well, not about the humans specifically, but about the possibility of a mate. He'd learned from an early age that temporary marriages weren't for him. Trying to convince an emotionally distant female that he was worthy of attention was hard enough, but when his Traxian instincts kicked in and he found himself vehemently against letting his wife go at the end of their contract, he realized that he wasn't compatible with temporary. He'd only been married once, but it had been enough to show him he never wanted it again. Sure, he could have flings of a sexual nature with females, he enjoyed those, but when he connected with a female, when he smelled her on him for too many days in a row, something in him railed against seeing her move on with another male. Matehood would be different. If he recognized a mate, they'd be bound together for life. He could be as possessive as he wanted, since everyone would chalk it up to his mating instinct. A cruiser flying high above the rest, indicating an authority vehicle, swooped above the throng of traffic. Maxu produced a wanjit fruit from his bag and bit into it. How long would it take this time?